Now for the first part of this question, what I've done is I've copied out a sketch then of what we're given. And we've got to show that the position vector of this particle at any point t on this trajectory is given by this equation here. So what I'd want to do first of all is say or draw onto this diagram what that position vector is. Let's just say that we take from the origin here to say a point up there as being that position vector at time t. Now we know that at time t equals zero the particle starts from this point a. So let's just have that as t equals zero, zero seconds. And it's projected with this velocity 3i plus 5j meters per second. So I'd first of all want to split this into two components because with projectiles we consider the horizontal and vertical motion separately. So for the horizontal motion it was initially projected horizontally with a velocity of 3 meters per second. Vertically it's got a component initially of 5 meters per second so just put that in there. Now when it comes to considering the horizontal motion then because the acceleration acts vertically downwards the acceleration due to gravity which we should mark on here is going to be 9.8 meters per second per second. Then because it acts vertically when we consider the horizontal motion remember it doesn't affect the velocity here the change in speed it just stays at 3 meters per second so therefore if we consider the vertical I shouldn't say the vertical I should mean the horizontal motion if we consider the horizontal motion let's just put a little intro here then we know that it obeys the formula s equals ut because there's no acceleration s being the distance that it covers. So if it's at this point say when t uh, time t then the distance covered horizontally to this point I think what we'll do is we'll just mark with a dotted line actually where it's going to be. It's going to be at this point here we know but it would have covered this distance in time t this horizontal distance and so that distance will be equal to u which will be 3 multiplied by the time t which will be just t. So that part then is our i component how far it's covered in a horizontal sense. Now we really want to look next at the vertical motion. So if we just write a subtitle here consider the vertical motion okay then essentially we've got to consider a SUVAT equation that's appropriate S U V A and T. Now we need a positive sense because we're dealing with a SUVAT based equation and that's got to be upwards because upwards is the positive J sense. So do we know what S is? Well we certainly know what it is from the point of projection here and that's where we ought to start. We know that the displacement after time t is given by say h. So we can say that that's equal to h. And then what is the initial velocity? Well it's 5 units, 5 meters per second upwards in the positive sense v, well we don't know what v is at this time t here so we'll just leave that blank. As for a we know it acts vertically downwards in the opposite sense to what we've got here. So that's going to be minus 9.8 and the time t, well that is t, okay, when the particle is here. So what equation would we use to connect these together? Well it has to be s equals ut plus a half at squared 
And so if we fill this in, we've therefore got for S H equals U, which is going to be 5 times T, 5T. And then we've got plus a half times minus 9.8 for the acceleration and then T squared. And if we clean this up, we get that H equals 5T minus 4.9 T squared. Now that is the height above A, but we want the position vector R, which involves the height above O. So it's going to be 10 plus H. So therefore, we can see that the height above O, let's just mark that in here, above O, is going to equal 10 plus this value here, 5T minus 4.9 t squared. So when it comes to r, we've got therefore r equals 3t in the i direction, followed by in the j direction all of 10 plus 5t minus 4.9 t squared. And that's in the j direction. Okay? So there you go. We've proved that result then.